In Tucson, Arizona, the Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Championship rolls on. Day two of the action, the final day. And this is the contender's bracket semifinal between the seven seed Washington Huskies and the three seed Arizona Wildcats. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Anne Marie Anderson alongside three-time beach volleyball Olympian Holly McPeak. And Holly, before we break down this match, let's talk about what just happened. A huge win for UCLA, their first ever program win over the top team in the nation, USC. And USC's first loss, they're undefeated on the season until the last match. And now they have to fight back in the contenders bracket to get back to that final. Right now we're going to see Washington and Arizona face up and then whoever wins that will play USC. All right, so let's talk about these teams. So Washington, the seven seed, has only been practicing in the sand for five weeks, Holly, and they came out and tore it up yesterday. Washington, they're, they're a special group of volleyball players. They're known for their indoor volleyball program. They play a short beach season, but what they do with that season, they make the most of it. They were good at last Pac-12 uh, last year as well, and they surprised a lot of people. They're going to be playing an Arizona team that has been talented and growing. Of course, the action is five courts across. We're going to start and turn our attention to court number one with Chrissy Jones and Tia Scambre of Washington facing the Witt Twins of Arizona. The Wildcats, of course, hosting this event, playing at home. This is winner go home. Madison Witt going up and going down the line. In this Arizona beach volleyball program, all five of these pairs are full-time beach volleyball athletes. So they're training year-round. So they're the more experienced beach volleyball pairs. Yeah, and with five courts of action going on at the same time, Holly, take us through how the format's going to work today. It's been a double elimination format, but this is the contenders bracket. Both these teams have lost five matches of pairs. The first team to get three points wins. So best three of five. All five matches play at the same time to conclusion. Sets one and two to 21 points. You must win by two. A third set, if necessary, to 15. Again, you must win by two points. Yep, for clarification, to get three points, each match is worth a point. Correct. So on each pair, they're playing their individual. Of course, the reason that that really matters is because in the matchup that we just saw, UCLA relied on their fives, their threes, and their fours to put it away for them. It was not the one and twos who won those matches. And that's why this is a team sport. You, uh, There's no weighted wins. A, a win at ones means the same as a win at fives, so everybody needs to contribute. Chrissy Jones little ball there and Jones taking care of it Chrissy Jones so good physical at the net she's been playing beach volleyball since she was 10 years old and she makes her presence felt at the net just intimidating she didn't even have to touch that ball just her presence at the net is intimidating and you really talk about the difference between these programs you mentioned it all beach only athletes on Arizona's side and only five weeks with their toes in the sand for most of the Huskies. This Washington program has still been building to it. Coach Keegan Cook, the head coach of Washington's indoor program says, I don't pull them away when they're in beach for indoor, but they're building towards getting more beach volleyball only athletes in in Seattle. And he talks about the benefits of, of beach volleyball, working with a partner, having to communicate, having to deal with difficult situations and respond. And that makes better all around volleyball players indoors as well. And Coach Keegan Cook, the indoor coach, appreciates that. Yeah, certainly he took his team to the NCAA tournament again this year. No one on about that Jones laying out and getting it and then goes up and finds sand in the deep court. Chrissy Jones so athletic, lays it out, picks up that short ball and then terminates for the point. What a strong start for Jones and Scambre. Scambre serves, going after Madison Witt. Looking for a touch and there was not one. And, and, Madison and McKenna Witt, very athletic, very explosive, but they, they, when they struggle is when they make too many errors, and you've seen it so far. A couple too many unforced errors to start. Madison and McKenna Witt switched sides. They still found Madison on the other side of the court. Jonathan Winder is the head coach of the beach program at Washington, an assistant indoor, 
and he has been very proud of what he's been able to do with the speech program in a short period of time. Yeah, I, he just says every day they get in the sand, they get a little bit better. And these types of athletes that they have at Washington, they're used to being so mindful in their training indoors that, that they bring that outdoors as well. Yeah, Winder only has one full-time beach pair in Crabtree and Chalmers. And then he has two students uh, who stuck around fifth-year seniors to try to give a little more time. He wanted to have four players at least to be able to face off starting January. But that's going to change next year for the Washington program as they have more seniors graduating from the indoor program and bringing in five beach-only players. You see the back set in the deep line shot by the Wits for the Arizona point, but they're going to need to score some points off their defense now. How is that going to change things for Washington's program to have nine athletes available in January next year instead of just five, five weeks of training? I think it's going to up the level big time for Washington. More touches in the sand. They're going to be more confident when the season rolls around. I believe they had one week prior to competition in the sand, and that's just not enough for, to get sand legs and the touch that you need in the beach volleyball game. Five courts of action going on at the same time on court one. Jones and Scambray leading. Let's take a look around. Pair twos. The Olivia of Arizona leading July and Schwan. As for the threes, Devlin and Manley again, Arizona up by three over Strickland and DeHogue. Right before this match started, big gusts of wind came through these courts and you, you can see the wind has picked up since the earlier matches and that can be a factor, especially for Washington who doesn't have all that time playing in the wind. They played a lot in the rain, though. They're telling us that works. Take a look at the wind. You can see the trees and the flags. Never a good sign that all the trees, all the bushes <laughs> are moving. And uh, never a good sign when you're showing up to play beach volleyball. Unless you know how to use the wind like you do. Correct. So you, you, the one thing you need to do is not fight it. Embrace it. Figure out how to work with it. And maximize what you can in this win because, you know, things go crazy. Well, and the thing about this win, Holly, as we're sitting here kind of holding our notes down at the same time, is that it's gusting. It's not any kind of a steady win. You don't know when it's going to come up. And so what adjustments do you make in a gusting win? One, you have to move your feet and, and get your feet to the ball and concentrate on a long touch. Really take care of it because that ball can take off if you don't take care of it. And the lower set's so critical. A lower set for sure. The higher you put that ball, the more time that win has to take it away from you. Scambray serving. This is the only court right now that Washington is leading on, is it the ones? All the sets are very tight across, no lead bigger than three points. Other than this one, a four point lead for Jones and Scambray. A put away by McKennawit. Beautiful kill by McKennawit running that back set. She's got such a quick arm swing. Both McKenna and Madison so explosive off the ground. They jump well, quick arms. Off the antenna. Scambray serving. Madison doing the majority of the passing. Turns it the other way right wow. as a gust, gust came up. Yeah, Madison Witt did a lot of work with her feet to get to that ball. It blew way inside. Good side out kill for Arizona. Hi, I'm Todd Gray. Arizona. Jones and Scambray, the only pair that was not on USC or UCLA to ever receive the honor of this year for the Pac-12 Pair of the Week, and that was this week's honor. And that's Chrissy Jones and Tia Scambray, best friends since they were 12 years old. Chrissy's got a lot of experience for the USA High Performance Program on the beach, and Tia Scambray, just a gamer, great all-around skills. I mean, who do you serve on that team? Both of the players know how to put the ball away. You see them using cold towels, trying to stay cool. Lucky for them, there's some cloud cover today in Tucson. Yeah, again, they're used to playing in a, kind of a cooler weather, at least when they're at home. It's 80 degrees right now here. The temperature will climb up to about 82 today, forecast. Arizona's program, well, they have been building and building. Steve Walker's in his fourth season as the head coach of the beach program, the 2016 Pac-12 Coach of the Year. 
was an indoor assistant for the Wildcats for 10 years before taking over this program. Scambre right over the top of the block, picked up. Madison Witt has been doing such a good job at the net. She touches the ball at the net and then turns and, and lays it out, picking up that little short ball over the net. Look at that extension. She has landed from her block and turned around and got that ball. That is not an easy skill. And then she gets the tight ball at the net to win the rally for Arizona. Madison and McKenna Witt were indoor volleyball players. They wanted to play together in college. They were cut from their middle school volleyball team. And in college, nobody wanted to take both of them. The same player, obviously, looking at. And Steve Walker said, I can make you guys great on the beach. They worked very hard to become great. But next season, they're going back indoor for another school, graduate school at Cal Baptist. They felt like it was another opportunity to get their education paid for, and they wanted to take advantage of that. But they definitely see their future on the beach. This ball really tight. Chrissy Jones, bigger press. Washington wins the point. Well, you say their future on the beach, and so going back in indoor, that's a move we don't usually see to go from beach to indoor. How difficult is that transition to go back to the beach then after that? Uh, it's something that you don't hear a lot about. I, th I think once you've done it, you can go back and forth. I feel like once they get indoors, they're going to be flying around the court. It's going to be such an easy game. Um, I, for me, I feel like indoors is a little harder on your body in terms of impact. Uh, so they'll have to deal with that pounding that every day jumping in a gym. Uh, but they'll be able to maintain the level they've arrived at and hopefully get better after that. And for Washington, they could make the argument, hey, we do it all the time because they have not yet been beach only. Jones and Scambre juniors will have their senior season with the Huskies next fall. Three-point lead for Jones and Scambre on court number one. Action tied on court three and four. These two teams playing for the honor of facing the top team in the nation in the contenders bracket final. Jones pounds. Chrissy Jones owning the net right now. Everything that comes tight, she goes up and gets. Tia Scambre, again, I told you she's coming two straight in and Chrissy Jones is pushing the set and makes it hard to put the ball away. I mean, setting's the hardest skill on the beach to make that transition from indoor to beach, learning how to apex that ball, set it up and down, and then approach work. Obviously, Tia Scambray, that's an area she can improve on. Uh, but more time in the sand, she'll get better at that. And then they're setting in gusts of wind up to 20 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. That's never fun or easy. It doesn't get easier. Let's pop over to the fives as this first set is winding down. It's a 20 to 10, and now a 21 to 10 as court five is settled. It looked like Washington. Oh, Arizona won that ball, that game. That's a five pairs for Washington, two sand only athletes who were three and one on the day yesterday for Washington. Jones and Scambray with a two-point lead over the Wits and keep adding to it. First set in the books on court five going Arizona's way on court one. Washington in control. Madison and McKenna need to be ready for anything. Chrissy Jones and Tia Scambray are going to hustle and make things happen. They might not play all the time, but they have good touches and, and can make athletic plays. Put away by the Wits. There you see the assistant first year, Kira Ayanone from Canada. She has been coaching internationally in Canada and she's been coaching the McNamara twins since they were 13, off and on representing and with Canada. And, and she first started training men's teams and I talked to her about 
coaching the twins, and now she coaches the Witt twins. So she got the McNamara twins, the Witt twins. She said she's trained six sets of twins, four sets of boy twins on the beach. So she is not new to this, and she plans to spend the summer with the McNamaras at the World Championships at U21 in China, coaching them all summer long. Holly, I know you coach a pair of twins as well. Do you approach it any differently knowing how well twins know each other and how sometimes there's no filter? Um, no, I don't, but I'm, I'm aware of the challenges that they face. Um, in terms of communication, uh, I make them talk. Sometimes they can read each other's mind, but it's important to verbalize, and it makes, it makes everything easier. It makes you a better partner. You don't, just because you're playing with your twin sister doesn't mean you need to stop communicating. You want to get in that habit. In case you need to play with somebody else, that makes you a better partner. Of course, you would know you're a twin as well. Correct. We never had the no talk thing. We yelled at each other. Exactly. Your twin a brother, <laughs> so you did co-ed <laughs> yeah. there. Wits within one against Jones and Scambray. The action on the other court's pretty tight as well. Washington leading on court three and court two, but by narrow margins. Madison McKenna had bat battled back. They were down by three or four early in the set. Scambray passes Jones. Pop over to the three court and take a look at Manley and Devlin versus Strickland and DeHoog. DeHoog serving. DeHoog, the lefty, puts it away and it is set point on court three. Carly DeHoog at six foot four, big presence at the net for Washington with a dynamic defender and Cassie Strickland and the All-American libero from the Washington indoor team. Manley up, no one on. Strickland loves to set the ball, dig the ball, and this one DeHoog goes a little wide. Yeah, Carly DeHoog needs to kick out wide and give her partner somewhere to set. Cassie Strickland and Carly kind of ran into each other on that last play. Strickland and libero for the indoor program. Loves to pound the ball. Was an incredible outside hitter. When they served her there, I thought, uh oh, here it comes. She can bring heat. And she loves to turn and hammer that line. So Remains set point, Huskies. And with the service error, Huskies take the first set on court number three. Huskies in control on court three. Let's go back to the ones. Jones and Scambray and the Wits all tied up. Right down the middle. McKenna. And just turning. The hot call is high line, and that's what she did. Yeah, Tia Scambray and Christy Jones, both very strong servers indoors. I think Washington really puts a big emphasis on their serving game indoors, and it carries over to the beach. Tough serving, the one down the middle. That puts pressure on the other team indoor or outdoor. So the Huskies take a first set win on courts one, two, and three. But on court five, Arizona strikes four first. Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona. The Huskies and the Wildcats squaring off in the contenders bracket semifinal. Winner of this match will face USC in the contenders bracket final. Let's go back to court number five where Haley Amaro and Natalie Anselmo of Arizona are facing Anna Crabtree and Lindsay Chalmers in set number two. Set one was Amaro and Anselmo taking it in decisive faction, Holly. And, and Natalie Anselmo and Hilly Amaro have really been a bright spot at fives for Arizona. Had a really good day yesterday. And I feel like they're a new team for Arizona on the court and have been really gelling lately. Crabtree and Chalmers, the only beach-only pair for Washington. Uh, Walk-ons here who wanted to play in the sand. Everybody else splits their time between indoor and beach, or at least did split their time between beach and indoor. As that ball goes down, we have a guest in the booth joining us here. Hey, everybody, how about Stein Metzger, UCLA's head coach, coming off a big win 
over USC and buying yourself some rest. But first, can you what can you tell us about the McNamara situation? Well, Nicole went for a ball yesterday and she dove under her left shoulder and got a little tweak. And um, this morning we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. We wanted to err on the side of caution because we do have one eye on the NCAAs too. We want to make sure that she's healthy for that. So there was a lot of talk about how we were going to play, what we were going to do, if she was going to play. But I got to tell you, if there's one word to describe this twosome, they're relentless. And they didn't want to not play or do something weird. So I said, well, well, let's let's talk about how about the I formation. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but Holly Holly has seen it before. Karch Cry was hurt at one point, was playing with a gnarly player. I think it Mike Lambert at the it time. It was Lambo, yeah. Who was a huge hammer. Um, and so I proposed this to this. I tried to find some video some video on YouTube, couldn't find it. But I said, let's go out there and try this. You line up one in front of the other. You point an arrow, and then they don't know which person is going to go to which side. And maybe Megan will get a ton of balls, and we'll see what we can do. And I said, just get as weird as possible. <laughs> poke the ball, do whatever. You've seen it a million times at the professional level. Somebody that's injured and they come out and just play great, do it playing a different style. So that's kind of, that's what they did, and they actually had in the second set they had a pretty good pretty good game. How happy with you are? How happy are you with teams two through five pairs two through five who really stepped up the intensity, knowing that their ones were hurt? Yeah. You know, threes and fours have been really solid for us all year. Um, Elise Sapia and Izzy Carey, who have been with the program for a while and, and fill a good leadership role too, have just been unstoppable all year. They've been great. So it, we, we were counting on them to do some good work for us. Um, one of the surprises for us was at the five position. We we have a couple of freshmen, and, and that position has been kind of hit or miss. But they, they came through today in big fashion, and they played really well and finally found their groove. So... That was that was key for us, and, and moving forward, I know I know that whoever comes through is going to be a tough battle, and we're going to be counting on them to do well again. Stein, the growth of your program over the last few years has been exponential each year. To what do you attribute, kind of the way that you guys have jumped and jumped until now? You're contending for an NCAA championship next week. You know, the administration has gotten really on board with it. Um, they they've seen that that we can be successful. We've always been a volleyball powerhouse with the men's team and the women's team, and it's, it was a natural fit. So. Um, they just realized what a great opportunity to be for UCLA and, and um, they've gotten behind us and that's helped a ton. We've got a facility now and we've got scholarships and we're able to really go toe to toe with some of the powerhouses. You have four freshmen really contributing big roles heading into the NCAA tournament next, next week. How do you keep them focused on just one match at a time? Well, fortunately, they all have a ton of experience. They've played big international matches, and they've been here before, and they know. Um, and then I'm going to rely on, on our leadership. We don't have a lot of seniors, but we have some great leadership. I've talked about Izzy Carey and, and um, Elise Sapia. Uh, but we also have Jordan Anderson, who came from the indoor team, who's filled a big role, and she's a, she's a great role model for our young players. And I think they're, they're really carrying the load when it comes to keeping those, those newbies ready. How significant was that win over USC? I mean, instead of having to play at 11.30, you now are playing at 1 o'clock. You got one match to go in this team championship. Yeah, Arizona's been nice enough to let, let us use their ice bath. So they're over there right now recovering, getting a chance to rest, to fuel their body. Uh, we'll come out and scout the next match. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a significant advantage and something that we're going to make, make the most use of. Well, I think more than the rest that you're getting, the confidence you just beat the undefeated USC team, target on their back, but you were able to get over the hump. How big was that for you guys? Um, it, well, now it's been proven that we can do it. Um, but I gotta say, this group is a special group, and they've always been—they've always believed that they can do it, even though we never have before. Um, and they've just always stayed confident and consistent with that—that um, that mentality that we can do it. it it's been—it's been amazing. It's been a great ride with them, and so finally that they've proven that that it's possible. And um, I don't know how that shakes up the dynamics, but certainly this team has shown up to play every time we've played this entire year, and I expect them to do the same down the stretch. But just a week ago, you lost 4-1, and then you're able to turn it around and win 3-2. Mm -hmm. That's I, a big change in one week. Yeah, you know, uh, I think it was closer than the score told. We came out firing, and, and that really key spot in the five spot, they came out on fire and won the first game and, and couldn't couldn't finish, couldn't follow through. So I think that was a critical point because then we went into the second round. We played three and three instead of all five at once. Mm -hmm. um, it gave SC a little more uh, confidence going into that second round, and I got to hand it to them. They've got five seniors on their team, and we came out swinging, and they just held their ground and played great at their, at their home facility. So 
I mean, they're playing well. I mean, I like the fact that we got to play them in the wind at a different facility this time. But um, I, I expect them to be tough in this next round, whoever they get to play. And, and moving forward, whether it be the finals or the NCAAs, I mean, that's still the team to beat. As we look at Washington and Arizona in the contender semifinal, whoever wins this match will face USC. Talk to us, Stein, about the depth in the Pac-12. No other conference in the country has nine teams playing beach volleyball. What does it say again about Pac-12 to be leading the march in beach volleyball? I think it's totally exciting. It's totally exciting, and I love being a part of this. Um, and it's great for athletes to go up against great competition. You're only as good as your competition. They're your best teachers. So the fact that we get to play against all this good talent day in and day out is just going to make us better and stronger. And, and um, uh, when a student athlete gets to compete in this kind of environment, it, it just makes them better people down the stretch. And so we're, we just feel privileged to be a part of it. Uh, my hope is that uh, the other schools join in and, and people continue to take on beach-only players. Um, and, and it's going to be an exciting ride. Good point. More opportunities for more athletes. Do you anticipate being beach only, or will you make exceptions for special athletes like a Tori Van Winden or a Savvy Simo? Uh, our model is to have a, a, a majority of beach only players with a few sprinkling of indoor players that can help us, especially with the physicality. You look at Tori Van Winden. Um, that's somebody who wants to go and compete at the highest level, both indoor and beach, and we can offer that. So uh, because of that, we got her, and she's a significant part of our squad right now. So we'll continue to do that. But really, our eye is on developing beach-only players for, for the most part in our program, and I think that's helped us quite a bit. Stein, thanks so much for taking the time to join us in the booth. We know you have a few other things on your plate today. You're going to go figure out what you're going to do for this final matchup. So one thing you can leave us with, what are you going to do right now so people understand in this tournament format, you said your team's in the ice bath. We'll see you on the court again at 1. What happens between now and then? Well, they'll get some fueling. They'll get some rest right now. Uh, we'll certainly come out and watch the contenders final to see what happens there, get a chance to scout those teams. And then we'll just do what we always do, which is put on your sunscreen, put on your tattoos, and warm up and go out there and play. Thanks so much, Stein, for taking the time to join us in the booth. Thank you. All right, as people are watching Washington and Arizona, it's match point on court number five. Amaro and Anselmo won the first set. Crabtree and Chalmers trailing by a lot here. Is Arizona about to put a point on the board? No, I know it's court. Hi. With the Ensemble and Amaro, a nice win for them yesterday for Arizona. The five's really proven to be a strong point, Holly, for Arizona. They have Natalie Anselmo grew up playing beach volleyball, and she's really, she struggled a little bit early in the season just adjusting to college volleyball, but she's really starting to move the ball around the court, cover the court, and she and Hallie Amaro together complement each other. Hallie Amaro grew up uh, in Southern California, has a little bit of beach experience. She's really battled injuries most of her career, but finally able to help Arizona get some wins at that pair five spot. And it's so nice for Steve Walker to have Anselmo, a first-year player, paired with Amaro, who's been a Wildcat for five and a half years, players playing indoor and then beach. So that experience, wisdom. Absolutely, and they get the overset to drop for the first point of the duel. Arizona on the board. Yeah, Arizona on the board leading this duel, one nothing against the Washington Huskies. Huskies had plenty of success on the other courts going in, though action still going on. Huskies won the first set on the other four courts of action, one, two, three, and four. So the fives for the Wildcats putting up the first point of the duel. <laughs> on court two uh, right now, it's a close one uh, between Schwan and July of Washington and the Olivias, McDonald and Halloran. McDonald with seven kills in this set so far. Destiny July trying to patrol that net there goes off her hands. The Washington pair, Courtney Schwann, I was so impressed with her yesterday. Good reads. She's really been working on her defense. Destiny July, so athletic, quick feet, retreating off the net. That's one of the hardest things about learning the beach game is getting off the net, not staying there, and playing defense. So you have to play defense. You can't hide in the beach game. you got to be ready to play. 
As you look at the scoreboard there, Arizona, the home team. Washington won the first set, Arizona leading the second set, but by one. So let's pop over to the three pairs and take a look at what's happening over on court number three. Cassie Strickland and Carly DeHogue of Washington faces Sam Manley and Haley Devlin. Haley Devlin and Sam Manley have played together a long time and grown up playing on the beach. So some good experience. They like to strategize. They know how to make adjustments in the wind. Yeah, we started playing together at 14 years old as they've been playing together now for five years. Wow, what an up. Strickland, that's what she does. Cassie Strickland, so dynamic, so athletic. You know, if somebody makes a trick shot in the wind, they call it the Cassie shot, just because she's <laughs> athletic and she makes things happen. Just a scramble play keeps it alive for Washington. They're able to score the point. The flying dig, that's the horizontal that Stein loves to see. Uh, there's nothing that Strickland doesn't think she can do. I mean, she was a, a football player in middle school, a middle linebacker, which is so great defensively. You can see that parallel. Also a quarterback uh, at that time. She's just tough. It was fun meeting her mom in the hotel last night and her nephew, who's three years old here, supporting her. But she just talked about Cassie's passion for the game that she loves playing and she's happy to be in grad school and one more year of competing. Yeah, and so flexible is Cassie Strickland. She was a powerhouse outside hitter on the indoor program. And then when Tia Scambray came in as a freshman, head coach at the time, Jim McLaughlin, said, I need you to be the libero. Strickland said it was an incredibly difficult time for her. It was challenging. Her identity was the little player who could get up and bang and to have to make that adjustment and give up hitting. She really was depressed for a little bit, but came out of it and really stepped up in terms of her role and, and led the Washington Huskies to an unbelievable finish. And, and she always does. She's a leader. And she became the Pac-12 libero of the year in a new position for her. So Strickland doing a little bit of everything. In fact, Cassie Strickland and Courtney Schwann will be paired together for the pairs competition that follows the team competition here. So again, versatility for Cassie Strickland. Strickland and DeHogue leading here. A win by Washington for the three pair would tie up this duel at one apiece. Winner of this duel will face USC in the contenders bracket final. You see Haley Devlin finding that opening. Carly DeHoog, six foot four at the net. That's a big block in front. Not easy to put the ball down. And then you got Cassie Strickland in the backcourt. Yeah, and if you let Cassie Strickland have a swing at the ball, she can pound like that. Love it. You know, who do you serve? Do you ex serve the explosive Cassie Strickland or do you make Carly DeHoog at six foot four side out? That's a question for you, Holly. Who do you serve? Well, you know, if it was me, I would serve Cassie. The only reason is I would make the six foot four move and set the ball because her strength is hitting, not setting. Usually. Just I'm speaking in general. If I don't know that team, that's how I approach that team. It's also interesting always uh, talking with you, watching the players here. You approach it one way and then you evaluate again, sometimes mid set and certainly after the first set. Correct, yes, you have to make in-match adjustments. You start with one strategy, if it's not working, boom, switch it up. I see so many college players stick with the same standard defense. Line block, angle D, they never change it up, they serve right at the player. I mean, it, it's just inexperience. If you're keeping that same traditional defense, it's good to mix it up, keep the other team guessing what you're doing. And don't serve right at the player. Serve it short, serve it deep, serve it middle. Keep that serve-receive player moving. Pairs one and three winding down in set number two. And Washington with the upper hand in both of these matches. On the right, Strickland and DeHogue leading by three. On the left, Jones and Scambray on court number one leading by four. If the Huskies are able to win both of these sets, they have a lead then in the duel. And the twos also battling it out. They're tied up at 19 apiece. It's match point on the right side of your screen. Strickland into Hogue need one more point to even up this duel between the Huskies and the Wildcats. Yes. 
And the Wildcats not having it yet. It remains match point on the right side. Sam Manley with a big side out. And now Haley Devlin a chance to serve and run up and block, trying to help her team come back. They go away from Strickland. She sets. And hug into the net. And so it will continue on and remain a match point. Meanwhile, the twos tied up at 20 apiece. On the left side of your screen, it's also match point for the Huskies. Look right side, option. And on the right side of your screen, the threes put a point on the board for the Huskies. Washington came out strong this morning, competing against the all time full-time beach volleyball program here at Arizona. Good showing so far. Match point now on court number one for Jones and Scambre. Can they take the lead in the duel of the Huskies? They would if they're able to post another point and a win. Meanwhile, the wind gusting strongly here at what they call Bear Down Beach in Tucson. And they predicted big gusts, which make this game very challenging. Jones and Scambray one point away from winning the match and giving the Huskies a lead in the duel. Wind gusting right on that set. It pulls it away, and the Huskies win on court one and three to take a 2-1 lead in this duel. That is a significant win. The Pac-12 pair of the week, Chrissy Jones, Tia Scambray. Big win on the one pair. Excitement happening on court number two. Look at the ball come down, and Destiny July trying to own that net. The court two. 22 apiece. If July and Schwan win this, Huskies win the duel, the right to play the top seed USC. Huskies are the seventh seed in this tournament, only been playing five weeks. Service air, and now Courtney Schwan on the back line. Destiny July at the net. Washington serving into the win in a good position to close it out right now. This is called peaking at the right time. The Washington Huskies off the hook, pounded away, tied up again at 23 apiece. If the Olivias can extend this, the third set in the wind on the home court, tough. They could find life if they extend it. July passes the ball. Inside. No blocker. Uh-oh. July puts a knee in the sand and gets up quickly. Wow! July and Schwan again, match point. You know what I love about that play? That ball was hit middle. Courtney Schwan and Destiny July basically ran into each other. Courtney Schwan got most of it. Destiny July got on her feet and ran it down. Puts up a good hittable set for Schwan. Well, we see our second upset of the day. This one is for the duel. Pounded away! And Washington, the seven seed, will advance to face the top seed USC in the contenders of final. Courtney Schwan running the ball down. Beautiful transition. Washington seems to be getting better every match they play out here. Incredible. The seven seed, Washington Huskies, fighting their way through the contenders bracket yesterday all the way to the final to face the top seed in the tournament and the number one team in the country in the contenders final. Big win for Washington. Of course, the action continues. The fours still playing here at Bear Down Beach. And a put away by Mia Mason. Mia Mason with the dig and kill. She and partner Brooke Burling were instrumental in getting the team to advance. Jonathan Winder so fired up that his team, that it's only been in the sand for the last five weeks, advancing again. I mean, you can't underestimate how huge both of these wins were today for USC to hand UCLA their first loss in two years, and then to have Washington, a massive underdog in this tournament, the seventh seed, Play the number one team in the nation in the next match. But massive underdog, just because of their limited time in the sand, in terms of athletes on the court, <laughs> they match up in terms of physicality with anybody. Just limited time in the sand puts you at a disadvantage. Washington not letting that get in the way. And we know that Huskies indoor coach Keegan Cook is watching and 
probably cheering pretty loud for his well, I thought it was funny because he said he was on the edge of his chair. <laughs> I was like, because you're out of control. You're just watching. There's nothing you can do to help your team and just cheering. It's a tough role to play. Yeah, Keegan Cook telling us right before this match uh, by phone that yesterday watching, he said, I haven't been that nervous in a long time. And he's not in, uh, in Tucson. He got to watch the amazing Pac-12 network coverage all day long, 12 hours of volleyball yesterday. It was amazing. Yeah, talking about the way that the Pac-12 has embraced the sport of beach volleyball, having nine teams playing beach volleyball, and the way that this network, Pac-12 network, has embraced the coverage of that sport. I mean, clearly the leader in beach volleyball. The top two teams in the nation coming out of the Pac-12. And the Olivia's not done. Mia Mason is just a gamer. She just loves the pressure. She did it at Gulf Shores uh, with Calais Mal, won a huge match to help Arizona advance. And now she and Brooke Burling working hard to get a point on the board for Arizona. Yeah, and they did it yesterday. I mean, it came down to the four pairs for Arizona to be able to advance. Both Brooke Burling and Mia Mason have spent some time in the sand. Mia Mason grew up in Manhattan Beach, but was primarily indoor and then moved to beach when she came to Arizona. This is her second year in the sand. She's long, athletic, has big hands, but I think she really thrives on the pressure. Yeah, I think she does because yesterday in the match that Arizona played against Stanford, it was tied up 2-2. It came down to the fours. And of course, as you just mentioned, your mind flashes back to last year at Gulf Shores where it came down to the fours. Everybody was watching Mia Mason and her partner, Kalei Mao, at that time gut it out, and yesterday they did it again. Exactly. That's Some players just love that attention. They already have very competitive, positive energy between Brooke and Mia, and just working together, it's been paying off at the four spot for Arizona. Mia Mason is a talented uh, musician. She plays the guitar, the ukulele. She's got a great ear. Her father, a six-time Grammy winner, played basketball at Arizona, Harvey Mason. Her mother was a volleyball player at Arizona. She was born to be a Wildcat. So will Mia Mason and Brooke Burling take this set and extend it to a third set here, or will McPherson and Wade be able to gut it out? Washington has to get ready for another match. They are playing the top team in the nation at 11.30 for the Contenders Bracket Final. No blocker on. Mason setting. Burling Cuddy. The back bump over catches Mia Mason and Brooke Burling by surprise. Caught me by surprise too a little bit. And Not you, easily performed. And you remember last year at the national championship when it was Arizona's Kalei Mao that did that. The back bump over. Wind taking that one over and that does it as McPherson and Wade get a win. And so again, for Arizona, the fives picked up a win, but otherwise it was all Huskies. They face USC in the contenders bracket final. So impressed by how the Huskies stepped up in this win, unafraid, not intimidated, and really came up with some big wins, especially at the ones. No third sets. Washington took care of business. Holly, looking ahead, Washington versus USC. What should we look for? USC has the big advantage just in terms of experience. We will bring you that match at 11.30 Pacific time. Washington and the top team in the nation, USC. 11.30. Thanks for joining us here on Pac-12 Network. See you then. Congratulations to the Pac-12 first round and